Hey guys, Jacob back here and welcome to another video. Now today we have to keep this one a bit quieter, but do a review on my new film, which was technically the main review for the 25th. But I told you there's only going to be two reviews on the 26th, due to the 25th being Christmas. This film came out in 1984, it was a slasher thriller film, an hour and 37 minutes long. And this film is known as Friday the 13th Final Chapter, or... Thirteenth, Starts on the campfire from the second film, flashbacks to the first and second film, and a bit of the third one at the end. A different title card. Title card leads to helicopter and then cleaning out the Higgins Haven after the third film. Jason is still lying dead from axe to the head from Chris. Jason's hand jump scared. Now they take him to the hospital. Axel, the person who finds dead people, girls' heart, gets the first kid death when Jason gets out of his morgue cell and hacksaws his throat and then twists his head around, which is a really nice kill. And then he goes for that nurse that he was having sex with. He strangles, um, I think it's Axel, she, she gets strangled and stabbed through the chest. Most people driving and singing. The people miss a, a hitchhiker and she gets stabbed through the throat. Um, they pull up to house. This is the first one that doesn't take place in the caravan park, it takes place in a house. And they meet the Jarvises, Tommy Jarvis and young Tommy Jarvis. He's a kid in this film, and then we've got Trish as well. I'm gonna page down this again. I I I I I bet these were really notes yesterday. No, no. They are talking about X. We see twins on bikes and they join the crew. We see they they go one of the girl cuts away from the rest of the group. And it cuts from the girl split off shots to uh, a naked skinny dip. Um, Tommy Jarvis, by the way, is a kid because this comes into place. He's just watching them skinny dip. Car starts to break down. The Jarvis's car starts to break down in Creepy Woods area, but on the road. Sam grabs girl, drags car. Young Tommy Jarvis is. They get this girl, Sam. Drags the girl up, split off into the boat. Uh, excuse me. Then Batpat comes and helps fix the Jarvis' car. And then they take him home for some reason. He gets to the raft in water. And then let's get to the parts where they start murdering people. Um. So now she. So the first one is where she strips down, and she swims over to the raft. Sits on the raft thinking Paul's come to see sorry or something. No, it's Jason. It's the funny death where he holds her down and goes, and she gets a, a pound through the stomach. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then Paul heads out and checks on her, but he swims to one of the raft. But yeah, before that, Jimmy, t the twin, and Jimmy head upstairs to do you know what. The other twin hangs out with computer guy. Paul goes for a swim, sees his girl on the raft, discovers she's dead. He swims to docking. Oh no, I remember this. Get shot up the baby maker by a harpoon. Black Parker hears Paul getting harpooned through the penis, so he pulls out the mache. Twin and Jimmy start having sex. They break the bed as computer guy finds film well and they watch it. They're annoying the twin with laughter, because the other three are watching this film and laughing. Not to want to leave... Uh, the twin having sex does not want to leave, so the other one leaves without her. We see twin die, but only by her shadow, which is what I really like about this film. There's not much I like about this film, but... The character's deaths are one of them that I like. This film is the worst rated for the 13th, by the way, but it's not still bad. Then, um... Uh, Casted on the wall is her shadow of her getting murdered by lightning. 
power in the driver's residence is out, so my mum gets to check it. You can tell what's going to happen next. Mum explores looking for... Mum sees something to make her scream, but it's cut before finishing. We don't see her again, so I'm going to assume she's dead. The Jarvis fam and look for the mum. Power still out. Trish looks for mum and forces Tommy to stay and fix the lights. Trish discovers backpacks tent. We see a POV of someone with a machete coming closer, and he and he slashes his tent. But Trish is there. The backpacker wants the POV, and he slashes his tent with a machete. Jimmy and Twin finish sex. Sex compliments from Twin. Still watches film well. Jimmy says, Where's the corkscrew? It's in his hand now. And then he's machete through the eye, which is running more quick because he's like, Jimmy, where's the corkscrew? Boom! Boom! There it is, you son of a bitch. <laughs> but yeah, so they. And then the twin gets killed. Sees Twin's bike is still there, but then, even though she said she was leaving, which raises her suspicions, but she gets grabbed by Jason through the window, and I think she breaks her neck and then throws out the window or something, because we hear a crap as she's like, you know, falling out the window. That packer is a victim's brother from a previous film, which I thought was really nice because there's no nothing to tie it up. People have seen this as the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. So you can already tell what the next three, two main characters are going to be. Tommy looks at Generator. He sees there's three survivors. Two are having a, a, a shower sex. And one is alone. Guess what one takes them out? The film world comes loose. And then Computer Alone Guy. Because the reason why I call him Computer Guy is I don't know his name. But he's like, let me search up on the computer and why you're a loner. Oh yeah, you're a dead fuck. But yeah, he gets stabbed through the back of the projector. As he falls, you see a line on the projector, which I thought was really cool. And then uh, there's a shower sex. Uh, after shower sex, someone heads off and he starts singing. The reason why I think he's bisexual in this film, it don't matter. But I think he... The male starts to sing. Because he's like... Ah, oh, Paul, is that you? I dropped my soap. Because obviously soap in prison means you're going to get raped. Alright. And then, this is the first film that I don't think a camper from a house survives. And so, oh, you haven't seen the first one yet, so I might be in there, but... He kills Sex Man by getting his skull like that and crashing it against the thing and then slicing his throat on the glass, which I thought was a pretty cool kill. Um... Now it's only the girl. Now she decides to finish her hair and she heads out because she sees the body. She tries to get out of the house, but she gets axed through the tummy, through the door, through the through the back, back of the top. So, someone axes her through the front of the door. So she they throw the, the axe. It goes through the door and hits her. And then the only ones are left: Trish, Backpacker, and um, Tommy. Now, Backpacker dies when he goes to explore the house. Goes, he sees all the bodies, obviously. Then Trish finds all the bodies, but Backpacker is down there trying to fix up the generator and gets killed when Jason starts stabbing him or something. And then Tommy shaves his hair when he gets to his house. I know what I've written and the rating. But basically, um, then Tommy shaves his hair off, which is played by the Goonies himself, Paul Feldman. Sorry for that movement. And yeah, it's really. And then he gets a machete. He cut, the Trish gets a machete. He cuts his mask off, and we see his face, which looks actually Germany deformed, not like a fucking bunch of jelly marshmallows or some shit. And then Tommy comes around and just massacres him, stabs him in the face like that, and he falls down. And it goes. Then he starts twitching, and Tommy picks up the machete and beats him down. And it ends with the hospital as Tommy Jarvis stares into the camera. Or Corey Feldman's stares into the camera and it fades to white. Now I give this film a 5.5 out of 10. It was, it's not a fun Friday the 13th film, but I like the change of setting, 
the change of scenery and the fact that uh, none of the campers survived in this one because there's always that final girl scenario you know Trish technically is a final girl it's different because the, the main campers we get used to because they're the Jarvis they live there these are just some friends that live together for a while they got all get killed but it was just slow pacing all the kills were fine but everything the story plot was shit and yeah it's just not compared in any, any way compares to the other the one two and three which got high ratings even though it's still watchable because it's a 5.5 anything above a five is still watchable so this is 5.5 and i will see you guys in the next review which is today which is the 26th i still need to release the i need still need to record a video bye bye